going on guys? Welcome to Back Porch 23. And today we're going to be doing some body work on the Bluebird project. Uh, as you saw in the last episode, or if you didn't see the last episode, we did a little bit of fiberglass work to fill in the gaps on these S14 fender flares to get them to fit on our Bluebird chassis. And now we got to fix all the ugly. And to do that, we're going to be using some body filler and sandpaper. And we're going to be doing lots of sanding again. So let's get started. These are the materials that we're going to be using. First we have a mixing board and a spatula spreader thing. Then we have some Bondo hair. This is essentially like Bondo, but it has fiberglass in it. So it's like a thick fiberglass paste. And then we have our standard body filler. This particular one's from USC. Uh, we're going to give this a try. I've heard it's a little bit smoother than uh, the Bondo brand. And then to sand them, we have our air sanders and grinder for those hard to reach areas. And the ever important bird dookie. And you should be all set. All right, so first thing we need to do is scuff up all the surface area where we want the body filler to latch onto. If you don't do this and you spread body filler over a smooth area like this, it's most likely just gonna fall off or it'll break off more easily at least. So you wanna scuff up the area you want with uh, some coarse grit. This one's 36. Um, you can use anything like 36, 60, 80 grit. I would say 80 grit at least. Um, anything finer is probably not gonna work too well. All right, first we're gonna start with the Bondo hair and hopefully we have enough of this. I'm just gonna use this on the deeper spots that we need to fill and reinforce a bit so we don't need a whole lot. So you can see it's not like regular body filler it has long strand fiberglass in there. So it's, it's essentially like chop strand but like in a paste form. So the general rule is for like a golf ball size of filler, you use like a pea size uh, amount of hardener. That almost never works for me. So I, I usually just put like a stripe straight across however much I'm using. So for like this, I'll just do something like that. I actually usually rely on the color more than anything to tell me if it's mixed properly, but that's going to be kind of tough on this one because it's pretty dark to begin with. So I just learned this technique is that you want to spread it out to get any air pockets out of it. All right. And this one's gonna be like super ugly, so yeah, just don't mind that. Yeah, it's already starting to harden a bit. All right, might need to mix a little more. I have to let that harden now. Well, the other thing we forgot to mention is you need a mask. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want to be breathing in all this like plastic dust particles and stuff. So you want to protect yourself. One of these would be ideal. It's more meant for like when you're actually painting, but it works just fine to keep the dust out of your face too. If you don't have one of these, I'd recommend at least getting like one of those tighter fitting face masks or something. Just don't breathe the stuff in, it's not good for you. <laughs> we waited about 15 to 20 minutes so far. The exact amount of time uh, it takes for the Bondo to cure 
really depends on, yeah, there's a lot of variables actually, like temperature, humidity, um, how much hardener you put in it. But if you did it close to right, it should be about 15 minutes. For us, that means it's kind of dark now, but we gotta keep going. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the air grinder and just knock down all the highest spots uh, that were left. The Bondo hair is pretty hard to work with just because you know, because it has long strand fiberglass in it and it's really difficult to get it to spread properly. So anytime you use it, it's immediately going to look horrible. So don't freak out if it looks like this or possibly worse. Like it's kind of supposed to look that way. Now we got most of the, the higher spots knocked down. Now we're gonna switch to the 80 grit on the orbital sander and hopefully try and start getting it to look a little smoother. Day two. We ran out of daylight last night, so now now we gotta deal with the sun and try to get this done before it's 100 and something outside. So let's hurry up. Uh, we got the fiberglass Bondo stuff all roughed out and now we're ready for our regular body filler to kind of smooth everything up a bit. So that's gonna be this stuff. Sitting a bit too. It's just like good authentic natural peanut butter. You just gotta gotta mix up the oil a bit. <laughs> and right away I noticed this is a bit runnier than the Bondo brand. So it makes sense that it's it sands and uh, applies a little smoother. I just want to try and get into one roundish looking lump. So you got a better idea of how much hardener to use. Yeah, it's watery. It's already getting hard. So yeah, it's hot outside, so less hardener. <laughs> now we gotta wait for this mess. All right, now we gotta sand this mess down a bit and throw another coat on there. And that's basically gonna be the whole process is just sand, bondo, sand, bondo, and just rinse and repeat until it looks more or less how you want it to look. And then we'll, we'll go on to some of the more finishing steps. But for now, let's get to sanding again.
All right, so we got pretty much as far as we're gonna get with the DA sander. Now we're gonna have to do the rest by hand and do all the little small details and stuff. And still pretty much the same process, bondo, sand, bondo, sand. Just now we're gonna be working with a lot smaller amounts and hand sanding and hopefully, I mean, it's already looking pretty good. That, that line's pretty straight. This line needs some work, but getting there. So for this, gonna use a sanding block and some 60 grit sandpaper. I like the 60 grit just cause it makes stuff go a little faster. Uh, you just wanna be careful not to go too far into everything cause then you're gonna have really deep scratches that you're gonna have to clean up later. Okay, been sanding literally most of the day. Pretty annoyed already, but I think they look pretty good now. All the lines and stuff look acceptable. Or maybe I'm just saying that because I don't want to sand it anymore. I don't know, but we're pretty much ready to at least throw some primer on it. That'll also help us kind of know for sure if we're actually done because it's always kind of hard to tell when everything's all like different colors. When you get a nice flat shade of something primer on there, then it'll be easier to see any like little imperfections that you might have missed or anything like that. So first we got to clean all the sanding dust and grease from my greasy bacon mitts on there. My so get some not Windex, wax and grease remover. Um, with this stuff, also I learned that you're not supposed to spray it directly on body filler, because it'll soak it up and could potentially cause issues in the paint. So on this, on this part's fine, because this is just the gel coat from the fiberglass, and you probably should clean this with at least wax and grease remover, because Obviously, any part that was fiberglass in a mold is gonna have a lot of like wax and stuff on it because it needs to separate from the mold. And also, people have probably been handling it in that, in that whole process. So the wax and grease remover should be fine for all this. Um, for the body filler, you don't wanna spray directly on it. I'm just gonna avoid the area altogether. All right, now that we got the part all cleaned up, we gotta hit it with the tack rag. Uh, this is just to pick up any small debris and junk that uh, might have missed with the, any small debris and stuff, because even after cleaning it with the prep saw, that kind of creates static, and that'll potentially attract other little debris and stuff. So, gotta clean it with one of these. And to top it off, I ran out of gloves, so now I'm trying to not touch the rest of the thing with my hands, which makes it even more complicated. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to mix our primer. And another thing I learned today is that you're not supposed to use um, single stage primers on, on top of like body filler, especially because your, your paint obviously always has to be a two part system, like a, a 2K system. So, if you use a single stage primer, for example, like a primer that you'd find at AutoZone in, in an aerosol can, that doesn't have a catalyst in it. It just kind of dries with solvents um, to the atmosphere. If you use, well, obviously you, you will use a catalyzed paint. Well, I guess you don't have to. Anyway, so if, when you use a catalyzed paint on top of that kind of primer, the catalyst in the two-part paint will affect 
the single stage primer under it and cause it to most likely shrink. And that'll probably happen after you're already done with the paint and it'll bubble up and it'll peel off. And guess how I know? Cut to a picture of the Z that we found um, after we painted it. Generally, you wanna stick with two part systems for pretty much the whole process is you'll just have a better outcome that way. I was saying you're, you're most likely gonna use a two-part paint, but there are also single stage paints, like something you find in a spray can. I guess technically you could get away with that if you use the spray can primer and spray can paint, but eh, it depends on what you're looking to do, I guess. The, the quality of that's not gonna be as good as something like this. So do your research and pick the adequate product for your needs at the time, I guess. Uh, for us, we're gonna try to stick with two-part systems for this process and see if it comes out any better. So, now we're ready to mix it and always pay attention, somewhere on the can is gonna be a ratio. For this stuff, it's a four to one. And that means when we mix it, we're gonna need to pick the four to one column on our mixing cup. And I know these always look pretty intimidating, but it's, it's super easy. You just gotta pick the amount that you wanna pour. So if you're doing like a big part, you might wanna do a five, and then you pour your primer or paint up to the five, and then it's a four to one ratio, so that, that one is gonna be the next column. You see it's under the number one. So you're gonna fill up to that number five with your catalyst. So it'll be up to that number of your primer, and then up to that number with your catalyst. We're not gonna use that much, so we're probably gonna stick with like a two. And same idea, you fill it up to the two with your primer, and then go up to the next two with your catalyst. And just mix thoroughly after that. All right, that's two coats of primer down and pretty happy with the result. It came out pretty good. It's nice and uniform, decently glossy. Not that that really matters at this stage, but uh, you can't really see too many like marks from where our Bondo starts and where the original part was. So it, I mean, if you squint a little, it kind of looks like it was supposed to be this way, right? So I think it came out pretty good. Um, there's one little like, edge where I guess I didn't sand good enough where like you can still see where the bondo ends but eh, it's whatever. The other side's a little not as good so we're not going to show that one. This side's better. <laughs> Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this little basic DIY-ish bodywork tutorial. Um, I can sure say I didn't enjoy it and it was really annoying and I hate sanding but all in the name of content, right? <laughs> now we just got to put them on and do some fancy little b-roll for you guys. See you next time.